Okay, let's um, let's go back and color by white again. Whoops, type with an S. And take a look at this plot. So if we zoom in, I think this is a fairly good representation of the variability in the data across sites and years. But the scale is a bit off, particularly because we have this single value from Little Bay Beach that is making all the plots um, need to be on a scale from zero to 5,000. This is quite obviously an outlier. And in fact, the vast majority of the points are actually less than 1,000. So we might be able to see more if we combine what we've learned from dplyr with ggplot to um, filter the data before we put it into our plot. So let's try that. So we'll add some notes to ourselves, combine. Uh, plot features data and pipe it into the names. Then we're going to filter or let's say beach bugs. We only want to plot beach bugs values that are less than a thousand. Right? And then we pipe that filtered data into ggplot, defining our aesthetics as we want um, x, um, year on the x-axis, and each y-axis. We want to color by site and then add a data plot. Um, and we want to separate a facet wrap the plots by site. Right, let's see what that does. All right, so if we restrict our range and only look at values of beach bugs that are less than a thousand, you can see now it's much more obvious that Clavelli is actually probably a nice place to swim, which kind of surprises me because it's such a narrow beach that I figured there wasn't actually much um, a turnover of water at Clavelli. But it turns out that Clavelli is relatively clean and not terribly variable relative to Malabar or the South Maruba rock pool. Not good, right? So the other thing that we can do with filter is a little bit like we did when we were summarizing, we can just filter to compare a couple of beaches. So um, let's do that and pick Koji and Bondi again, like we did before. So similarly, we can do plot beaches. We will omit data for each bugs less than a thousand. Filter again. And this time we want to say site is 
is point ten percent and the vector that includes just the two sites that we want to compare. Right, now at this point, it is sometimes useful to run this um, to see whether this filtering is going to do what you want it to do before you try a plot. So let's see if we look at this. Um, 656 more rows. That sounds like it's just looking at Kuji and Bondi. Um, let's trust that that is actually what it's doing. All right, so we've taken our beaches data, admitted the NAs, filtered for values that are just less than a thousand, and then filtered for only values from Kuji and Bondi. And then we pipe that into ggplot. Um, define our aesthetics as year on the x-axis and x on the y-axis. Um, might as well keep with the color by sight. And we use a plus when we're adding components to a ggplot, you use a plus rather than a pipe, we pass Gion um, Jitter. Let's see what um, that looks like. Oh, okay. So it has taken Bondi and Kuji and plotted the points on top of each other, which is one possibility. What I forgot to do is add the facet on the end, the tilde, and say facet by side, and it will plot them separately by year. If we look at that zoomed out. Nice. So it looks like generally. Kuji is more variable. If we plot the trend line, maybe Bondi's values are getting better over time. Um, interesting. Okay, so that's how you can use combinations of dplyr functions like filter to filter your data before you put it into a ggplot.